Indiana is one of the top 10 states for owning a pet. 69% of households in Indiana have a pet, according to the Veterinary and Medical Association. How many of you own a pet? More specifically, a dog. Even a dog. That's a lot of people. Me, myself, own a dog. And I remember the first day when I got my dog three years ago. It was literally the best day of my life. She's my best friend, and I could not go a day without her. I don't know about you guys, but I look forward to going home every day and saying hi to her. Um, my group and I have found many animal-related things to do in this area, and we're going to share them with you today. Interacting with nature, especially animals, is something humans get to do every day. It can be very therapeutic and fulfilling. Today we will show you the many ways you can get involved with animals in the community through explaining the different parks to take, part, to take pets, showing the humane society you can adopt from, and the zoo that offers many opportunities. The first um, park I'll be sharing with you today is the Monon Trail. Um, the Monon Trail was established in 1996, and its length is more than 25 miles. The trail goes through Sheridan, Westfield, Carmel, Indianapolis, Broad Ripple, and meets up with the Cultural Trail near Massachusetts Avenue downtown. It is open year-round, dawn to dusk, and is best enjoyed from fall to spring to see the leaves fall. It is a great place to bring your furry friend on the adventurous trail. You should check it out if you're in search for a decent hike or an extensive bike ride. As you can see from this map that I had to turn sideways, because the trail is actually so long. There's many stops to do along the way, and there's many like activities to do along the trail and many things offered on the 25 mile hike. The next park I'll be talking about is Holland Park. Holland Park is the first municipal park and it was developed in 1991. It is over 34 acres and has a wide range of amenities for all age groups. Some features include the athletic fields, splash pad, playground, picnic tables, and the multi-use trails. The trails are home to many native animals such as squirrels, deer, birds, common things you would see every day. It is a fabulous place to bike or go for a relaxing walk with your dog. This map shows all the amenities featured at this park. It is kind of in a circle, so it's very easy to navigate and just walk around too. I know a lot of people that visit this regularly and it's a very fun place to go. The third park is um, Ritchie Woods Nature Preserve. The Fishers Parks and Rec website states, quote, located in the heart of Fishers, Ritchie Woods Nature Preserve is the perfect place to unplug this summer, end quote. It is one of two designated nature preserves in the state. It is 127 acres and offers nine beautiful trails. Walking your dog is common, but you must follow the simple rules in order to keep the wildlife healthy and clean. It is one of the best spots to bird watch and to admire the surroundings. This park has a lot of forest, as you can tell, so you, when you walk through it, you feel like you're <coughs> enclosed, but um, it is big as well and is a great place to go and walk your dog through. The final park I'll be talking about today is Flat Fork. Flat Fork features some um, the mountain biking and a 60-foot sledding hill. It is Fisher's newest year-round park, and some amenities include the 1.25-mile progressive bike course, the fishing pond, three tree houses, trails for walking and hiking, and many more. Fisher's Park and Rec has donated 20 acres of the 60-acre span to reforestation efforts to protect habitats and species. It is an awesome place to bring your dog and family. From this map, we can tell that there is many amenities offered here, and since it is very new with the sledding hill, it attracts a lot of families with kids and their dog to go visit. I know personally I love going to Flat Fork. Um, it's a great place to visit, and you should check it out. And now Sierra will inform you of all the Humane Society in our area. Okay, so you don't have to just own a dog or go out to the parks to see wildlife in Indiana. For in fact, we have in a great Humane Society in Hamilton County in Noblesville. And this Humane Society has many different programs and events and volunteering opportunities for you to get involved with. So first I'm going to start with some programs. Our first program that I'd like to highlight is the Survivor Program which is a program to help injured animals recover through, um, through funding. And so this was established in 2005, and it's been very life-saving to many animals. For the really cool thing about Hamilton Humane Society is that it's an open shelter, that unlike many other shelters in the country. And so any dog or cat or animal that comes up to its doors, it has to welcome in with open arms. And so this, lets it, this program lets it fund animals who need surgeries, animals who have chronic illnesses, or th who need physical therapy, and many other things, and it fully funds all of this. So take, for instance, a dog named Sweetie. 
who, after getting hit by a car, got, had to go through a three-hour surgery to help two broken hips and a broken ankle. And then she came to Hamilton Humane Society, who graciously welcomed her in with open arms and paid full, the full amount of all of her surgeries and all of her physical ther therapy to get her back on her feet. And then they helped her find her forever home, where she is so much happier now. Another great program they have is Pets Healing Vets program. This is a completely unique program to Hamilton Humane Society that not many other shelters in the country actually has. And so this pairs a veteran with a dog to help them cope with PTSD and they fully fund giving that v dog to the veteran. And it's been so successful and helped so many veterans get back on their feet and recover from the war that they've gone through. Now, most of these programs are fully funded through donations. And as teenagers, I'm sure not many of us have much money to give to really cool things such as these programs. And so, but don't worry, because there are so many different events that you can get involved in if that's what you feel. One, there's a Trends for Tales Upcycle Boutique, oh shoot, sorry, that, um, it's an upcycle business that sells many different bags, clothes, and other retail items for you to go and buy, and all the profits made from this boutique goes straight to the Hamilton Humane Society. So you're getting a really cool item while also knowing it's go the money you're spending is going to a great cause. Another event they have is their Tinsel for Tails event, a holiday petacular. Now this is in November and it's a night of s silent auctions and a night of sharing successful adoption stories from, th from around the year. And it's so successful because you get to go hear about so many different so many different dog adoption stories and cat adoption stories that just really is uplifting. And last year it was so successful it raised $220,424 for the shelter alone. So it's a really great event to just go and learn more about the shelter and the dogs and the cats that they get to sponsor there. One other event that they have is the Woodstock Survivor Charity Walk in Concert. Now this is in October, I believe this year it's October 5th, a Saturday. And so all of those survivor pets from the survivor program get to actually like walk, is a little walk that you get to walk along with them, with the dogs and cats that are fully funded to the survivor program. And it's just really a cool event to learn about and just see the impact the shelter is having on so many dogs who need it. And then as well as there's a concert. And this year the concert theme is Elton John, so it's going to be a night of a lot of fun rock songs and that kind of thing. And so you can just learn a lot about dogs and see really uplifting stories and then rock out to music. And so then another, um, so one thing that HSC just put in is the HSC Students for Shelter Animals Club, which um, is, is supposed to be helping the different shelters throughout the state. And so Lauren Wynn, who is, the he is one of the heads of this club, is going to talk, it, we interviewed to talk about volunteering at shelters. So a lot of us probably have, are in clubs that require us to do some volunteer hours, such as NHS and Key Club and I can go on and on. Now what better way to volunteer than at an animal shelter spending your time and spending your time with so many dogs. And one, in order to do this at Hamilton, Humane Society, you just have to put in an application, go to an orientation, orientation day, and then you get to help out and spend all the time you want with dogs. And Lauren Wim um, says she regularly volunteers at Humane Societies, and she sees a lot of adoptions happen every time she goes, and when she leaves and comes back, she sees so many different dogs that, and <coughs> dogs she hasn't seen before because so many have been adopted, and it's really uplifting to her. And when she was talking about um, working and volunteering, she says, her favorite part is, quote, my favorite part is seeing the dogs go from quite sad and lonely to excited and active when we get to walk them. They are usually only ever taken on walks out way me once a month because we are so low on volunteers. So taking them out on walks is so very rewarding, end quote. Now, they also, this club also helps, holds a bunch of fundraisers for shelters like bake sales and movie nights. So if that's another way you'd want to help the shelter out, you definitely can do that. So overall, there's so many different ways to get involved with the Humane Society here in Fishers, Indiana. And that's, you can donate, and that doesn't have to be just money, it can be supplies, like blankets. There's different events, like Tinsel for Tails you can go to, you can volunteer, and if you feel so inclined, even adopt a dog. Now let's say you're not a dog or cat person, but you are interested in animals, Cam is here to talk to you about the zoo. Okay. So I'm going to ask you one question, okay? How do you continue this? Oh, I got you. Okay. 
If you were gonna think of something really cool in Fishers, what would it be? You probably thought of the zoo, because it's in your face. Take one step to your left, so it's not in your eyes. There you go. Okay. So you probably thought of the zoo, all right? Now let me ask you, how many of you have visited the petting zoo at the school? Raise your hand. That's like everyone, all right? Now let me ask you, who wanted to go again? Raise your hand. Okay, that's everyone again. All right. <laughs> now, who has been to the Indianapolis Zoo? Raise your hand. Everyone again. Okay, the zoo is so cool. And so I went to the coolest teacher in the school, second coolest teacher in the school, Mrs. Purcell. <laughs> I didn't say that you were the first yet, so, okay. So I asked Mrs. Purcell, she actually teaches zoology, if you didn't know, a little fun fact. And I asked her, why do you teach zoology? And like, you know, why is the zoo so cool? Why is it important? And she came to me, and what she told me was the main focus of what the zoo is. You know, most people, when they think of the zoo, well, not most people, idiots, morons, they say, oh, the zoo tortures animals, keeps them out of the wild, they're dying, they don't get to live a good life like they would if they're out in the wild. And Miss Purcell said, well actually, they keep endangered animals alive. They give them a chance to live. And um, <laughs> basically, you know, some animals, you know, they're going to danger, they can't live forever. So the zoo gives them a nice, happy old time. Now, I'm gonna go over some things at the zoo, some exhibits. I have two announcements. First, students who ride bus 126, please wait under the awning for bus 271, which will be a few minutes late. Again, students who ride bus 126, okay. please wait I'm gonna, under the awning for bus 271, the zoo, the super cool. which will be a few minutes late. Also, Students entering prom will need to have their student ID. What? Please have these things ready when you enter prom. Guests will also need to have a balanced ID. Parking at the Bidwell is free but limited. There is additional free parking nearby. <laughs> and here we go. The 2019 prom court nominees are guys. Jesse Triplett, Michael Rudell, Sam Houston, Anthony Eggers, Luke Bracken, Adam Huckabee, and James Rathbun. Girls, Maddie Wade, Claire Wilkinson, Laura Stancato, Eileen Markey, Molly Walton, Caroline Shoemaker, and Sarah Gross Nicholas. If any of these nominees wish to be removed from the court, please see Mrs. Rose today or at the prom. The prom court nominees may receive their sash upon entering the prom. You cannot be crowned prom king or queen if you are not at the prom. Please, everyone, drive safely and make good choices. Go ahead. And start back up. Okay. Basically... That's just some evidence for you why the zoo is yeah, the zoo is cool, not the zoo. So you have the wildlife exhibit. Most of you, that's probably what the zoo is known for, the wildlife. You know, you have gorillas that are in the jungle. You have this amazing lion. Uh, who thinks uh, HSC is a cool school? Raise your hand. Okay, well, you're lying, but for the sake of this speech, it is cool. <laughs> okay, so that lion's cool. The zoo's cool. All right, um, let's go to the next animal here in the wildlife. So we have a tiger, meow. Um, okay, There's, I don't really have any facts for the tiger. Uh, monkeys are actually the fan favorite of the zoo. Um, everyone loves going around, you know, seeing the monkey make its ooh ah ahs. That's not a real monkey, by the way. <laughs> Just to clarify. Um, you also find elephants there. Now, here was the aquarium. <laughs> Here's the aquarium, okay? Uh, you know, you have all kinds of fish. They all harmonize together so they don't get eaten. I think they're trained or something. And um, 
it's very quiet down there. Like you're not allowed to talk, or else the fish will swim swim away or something. Uh, that's what Miss Pur Mrs. Purcell told me. Um, so there's also uh, another called the uh, Shark Tank. Not not like Shark Tank the show. Or it's a tank of sharks. Um, th that's not a shark you'll find there though. That's kind of deadly. So you'll you get to pet the sharks with two of your fingers on the top of its body. That's not a real shark, by the way. It's actually from a movie called Nemo. Okay, so they also have turtles. They have like their own like turtle uh, like dome area where there's different types of sea turtles. types of snakes. <laughs> okay. So you have your uh they don't have deadly snakes because of health reasons. Um they, they basically just hide out. Okay. <laughs> this, this is another snake. That object's not in the Is this about done? Almost. two slides on this one, but it's okay. Um, there, yeah, no, no, there. But overall, there are many different ways to get involved in the community, in the Indianapolis community, and all the wildlife we have to here to offer. There, first of all, there are many parks that can help you connect with wildlife while also spending valuable time with your pet, which is so cool. There's a there's the Hamilton Humane Society, which offers different volunteering opportunities and events, and a chance to get to know pets and maybe even make one's day. And lastly, there's a zoo, which is fun for all ages and a great experience to interact with animals that you might not in get to in your daily life. Can you imagine how incredible it would be to get to spend time with extra animals in your daily life? It's amazing. Animals can relax us like nothing else in the world can. And that's why it's just so important to get out and get to spend time with them in nature. And this is important to all of us because we all have pets at home and we all get to see the amazing impacts that they have in our lives. And we want you to have that impact as well. Thank you.